Hello and welcome to In The Lab. Now today we've got what will hopefully be a spectacular experiment for you. It's called Thermite and this here is the Thermite mixture. It's actually, and I'll show you the bottles, we have got some iron oxide called iron 3 oxide specifically and it is aluminium powder. So it's these two very carefully mixed together. Now we have to mix them together just before the experiment happens because if you store them, there is a risk that it will actually explode on its own. So you can't actually do that. You have to make sure you mix it just before it happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the iron oxide and the aluminium powder very carefully into this filter paper that I've got here. It's resting on a clay pipe triangle on a tripod. I'll tell you what's going to happen in a moment. What we also have is a nice beaker. It looks a little bit disgusting because it's got sand at the bottom that's got some iron mixed in from a previous experiment. So there's some sand and then there's some water on top of that. And here's why we've got this set up. What I'm going to do in a moment is pour a tiny amount of magnesium powder into the middle and I'm going to stick this magnesium ribbon into the top. This is just the fuse. Once we light this strip, the powder will light and it will produce enough heat to cause a reaction to take place in the thermite mixture. It's a displacement reaction. So at the moment, iron is present, but it's there in the form of iron rocks iron oxide, that doesn't even make sense, does it? Iron oxide, and that's rust. So you might have seen rust all over the place, it's that colour. We need to get the iron out of the iron oxide, and heat will do that. It will cause aluminium to take the place of the iron, so we end up with aluminium oxide and a lump of iron which will fall down here into the water. It'll be very hot because it produces a huge amount of heat. The water may sizzle a bit and it will land safely into the sand. So that is what we're going to try and do. And a long time ago, people used to use thermite mixture to actually get iron. So when they were making uh, railway lines, they would actually need to use thermite mixture to put in the gaps between the lines. They would cause the reaction to happen. It would produce iron and it would stick together the railway lines and that's how they built the railway lines right the way across America. So we're going to replicate that and we have to do it incredibly safety, so safely. So I have got my spectacles on, we've got a shield just to make sure it doesn't go backwards. It might be quite spectacular in this area but it should be pretty safe. So I'm going to let Mr Thomas do this experiment now. Okay so now it's time to make our fuse. So I made a little dent in here. Right, and I've got some magnesium powder, and this magnesium powder will burn hot enough to set off this thermite mixture. There we go. And I'll put a little magnesium strip in it that I will set the light. Excellent. We've got our flamethrower, haven't we? Yes, Special we science department perk there, we get to use this. Right. Now the trick is to light the top without burning the paper. Let's see if we can do it. Oh. Okay, we'll start again, see if we can lift it up. Here we go. This is science, everybody. It doesn't always work first time. Okay. We've got it standing up. Here we go. Take two. As soon as it starts to light, we've got it. We're out the way. So oh, that's delightful. And the thing about thermite too is because it's got oxygen, right? It'll actually burn underwater because it, that iron oxide has its own oxygen that it carries along with it. So that's why it was still on fire when it went under the water. Fantastic. And of course, it's so hot. You might have heard it go bloop and then blah, 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 blah. it kind of bubbled. It sizzled the water. It actually heated up this water. So I'm not going to touch that because it still might be quite warm. Then it landed, as we said before, in the sand. And we're now going to see if we can get our lump of hopefully pure iron out of there. For that, we'll need a magnet. Okay, so we should have a tiny lump of iron from that reaction that we should be able to pull out with a magnet. If I go searching for it. Have a good hunt, there's definitely some in there. Can we find it? 
Nothing's come out yet. Hmm. Tell you what we can do. We'll get rid of some of the water and we'll see well, if we can there find we go. It. Oh, you did. Oh, well done. Look at that. And hopefully it's not too hot now because we've left it for a while. I can now touch this. And I can pull it off and we can get a nice close up. There we go. It still looks... Uh, like it's got iron oxide on the surface, but if we were to wash that off in water, we would see underneath that it's a nice shiny iron. So it's only a little bit of iron there, but we only started off with a tiny little bit in the clay pipe triangle. So you can imagine on a big scale, you'd produce quite a lot of iron from this. So I've given our little lump of iron a wash. And I found another one that was at the bottom of the beaker from a previous experiment. So as you can see, it does look a lot better when we get rid of the rust. And of course, that's how to make iron. But don't do it at home.